I'm Nicholas Powers with Arrow Electronics, and we're here with Caustic Creations at BattleBots, and we've got their bot, Poison Arrow, in front of me. And as you can hear, my voice is pretty much gone because this has been an incredible event so far. We got to hang out with them, we got to see them fight. It's been amazing. Guys, how has it been for you? Great. It's been uh, just all inspiring events, uh, seeing all these robots, all these competitors, seeing people that we grew up watching on the original <laughs> seasons, like meeting them and them meeting us and going, hey, you built a great robot. So, I don't know. Zach? Yeah, I mean, we had some pretty high expectations for the bot. It hasn't quite lived up to its full potential, but even then, I mean, we're pretty excited. Well, yeah, I got to see you guys fight and it was, it was incredible to see the amount of damage this can do. What has been the most exciting thing for you guys? Just seeing the robot perform as we expected, you know, it's it's not quite there yet, but we got uh, just a just did some great fights in so far, so. Yeah. Any big hits that you want to talk about? We've had uh, one match, um, you know, you'll have to see it on TV, but <laughs> it's gonna make for some great television. Uh, this thing has been putting the hurt on some other robots, so mm -hmm. I, it's, it's doing, it's not it's not 100% there, but I'd say it's a good uh, it's a good solid 8590. So <laughs> B B plus. So after I mean last time we spoke, you guys said there was some the speed controller was a little more limiting than you had wanted it to be. Has that how is that engineering played out for this um, event? Yeah, so we've kind of had to temper back our, our power levels and uh, decrease our acceleration time. So it's it's definitely challenged the strategy. Normally we can just get this thing up and revving and go straight in. Right now we have to kind of play a little game of cat and mouse while we run away and get the drums <laughs> spin up to full speed. So, Well, yeah, I heard Casey yelling out a countdown to yeah. try and get more of a man yeah. manual engineering, no electronics needed. Yeah. So, yeah, as Zach has been driving this thing, all I'm doing behind him is, one, screaming. Uh, <laughs> Too panicking, and then you know I'm trying to kind of be the extra set of eyes, you know, for Zach, and uh, kind of count down some of these events. So we we know how long it takes to spin up. So I'm counting up to that spin up time, and as soon as we're ready, then I give him the green light to go in for the kill. I see some really interesting pieces here on the bot. It doesn't look like these are normal additions. What are these red guys? So what we have to do at Battle Boss, because safety is paramount, is keep everything as safe and tucked away as possible. So we've actually got some covers for some nasty sharp metal right here. Oh um, man. People have kind of cut themselves on this before, so we try and keep them covered up so no one's gonna hurt themselves. And this guy right here is actually our weapon lock, so it keeps the uh, drum from moving when it's in place. That way, if, you know, it accidentally did get turned on and spun up, it, it, it wouldn't be able to move. This is our drone, so this, this guy is called Buzz. And Buzz is a, is a creation of mine that took me actually quite some time. I spent about 300 hours on this guy before I arrived. I had a lot of difficulties working on the flamethrower, so this bot Wait, 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 fire. wait, wait. So this thing has a flamethrower? Yeah, it's got a flamethrower. <laughs> so if you look here on the bottom, here's the nozzle. Okay. You got an igniter, nozzle, and a fuel valve, fuel tank. Mm -hmm. So this sucker shoots a nice flame. Uh, you get around four feet, um, sometimes it peaks up to six feet when the tank is half full because when the tank is half full you get better expansion of the gases inside the tank, Okay. you get more pressure, and when I first pull that trigger switch to release the fuel when the tank is about half full you get six foot burst. You see this big fireball coming out the bottom, it's pretty sweet. So have any of the other teams been thinking of countermeasures to drones? Yeah. Uh, there certainly are some countermeasures out there. Uh, <laughs> one of the one of the enemies actually took out a drone in a fight just before ours yesterday. Okay. It was pretty dramatic. You're going to want to see that on TV. So <laughs> Yeah, there's some incredible stuff that's been going on and some uh, incredibly innovative weapons that are going out yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, these aren't drones aren't exactly known for being durable. That's correct. Drones are pretty fragile. So these props, these are just, you know, standard APC plastic props. You smack one of these up against the wall or another drone and it's going to break the prop and you're most likely gonna have a crash. Even with six props here, um, if I break one, I'm most likely gonna have a crash. And so. uh, I see multiple battery connectors here. In order to get the flight time you need, are you going for at, like extra batteries, or how long are you trying to keep this thing airborne for? So, the, the matches are three minutes. My goal is to keep this thing airborne for at least three and a half minutes, that way I got a little bit of buffer. And we ended up sizing the sucker just right, so it's got a four minute flight time, fully okay. loaded with all the fuel, everything. What you may not realize is, while this may look like a single unit, 
at the end of the day, there's actually three drivers. You've got the main bot, you've got the tail, and you've got the drone. So Hannah, what is your job? Uh, I drive the tail, and what this is really used for is for distraction. Um, it's got, it's its own unit, so it runs on its own power and its own transmitter. Um, it does this fun little wiggle thing. <laughs> it's got springs and wires that kind of, that move around using these pulley systems. And then um, it's got these two pins. That's where it attaches to the robot. And we can pull these pins and it can drop off the robot and kind of waggle around on the floor by itself. So it's really cool, it's just a distractor and it's making the audience really like us a lot. What kind of tactics do you use with a, an assisting minibot? Um, you, you really just want to be the distraction, be constantly on them. If okay. there's something constantly going after them, they are just super distracted and have a hard time focusing on one robot. And then if you're constantly going under the wheels, they're getting off balance. So it, it really throws off the other team with a minibot. So it restrict their freedom of movement, mm -hmm. prevent their weapons from spinning up. Uh, yeah, it can cool. do all kinds of things. We saw a few fights where they just got jammed under there and the, the bot couldn't move. Well guys, thank you very much for uh, inviting me out and it's been incredible to watch you fight and best of luck in all your upcoming fights. Thank if you guys want to see more about um, Poison Arrow, I encourage you to watch Battle Box on ABC. It airs in June and uh, hopefully you'll get to see a bunch of caustic creations and these guys doing some amazing things. If you want to see more about some of these cool engineering projects, uh, subscribe below or go to arrow.com.